two and a half years through this pandemic and COVID cases are rising once again. In fact, the president just testing positive for a second time, leading a lot of people to wonder how does that happen and others to say, well, I guess getting sick is inevitable. So here to address it all is our ABC 15 health insider, Dr. Shad Marvasti. Good morning. Good morning. So first, let's talk about the president getting COVID again uh, for the second time in a matter of weeks, really rebound case is what they're calling it. Um, so how does that happen? Well, unfortunately, with Paxlovid, we're seeing that happen a bit more um, where what happens is the antiviral medication brings your viral load down. So it does its job and keeps you from getting sick or keeps the virus at bay so it doesn't kind of caused this huge inflammatory response, which is what we saw earlier on in the pandemic, where you, you know, just your whole body's inflamed and you have to be hospitalized and all the systems shut down. But then when you stop taking it, uh, that, you know, impact of kind of bringing that viral load down kind of goes away, if you will. So like pushing it down and then you take that off and then basically the viral load comes back. Thankfully, it's not coming back to the same level where it just kind of takes over and gets you really severely ill but it's gonna come back to the point where you're gonna test positive again. I know I've spoken to a lot of people myself who have gotten COVID recently, who were vaccinated, double boosted, and still say that it was tough on their body, short, but it was difficult for the few days that they had it. In the meantime, a lot of people are also getting that attitude of, well, it seems inevitable. So what am I really worried about? I just go about my life. Is it really necessary to get boosted if I'm gonna get it anyway? But there is a new study from the VA health system that definitely says, yeah, you should be concerned. In fact, you might have increased risk factors if you get it again. Absolutely. The, the VA study that was done um, looked at, you know, um, millions, actually 5.3 million records um, of folks who had COVID. And they found people who had COVID more than twice. Uh, so may, one time and then the second time and then third time. So two, three, two or more times, basically, were at increased risk of having chronic conditions to the point where they would be hospitalized in the uh, coming six months and also an increase uh, at with risk of, of death. Um, so, you know, we see like some serious severity issues. We already know that everyone is at risk for long COVID, even if you have a very mild course of COVID, you still may have residual long COVID symptoms. And remember, long COVID is not just like a vague feeling of feeling a little tired. It could be, you know, um, having problems with your brain, increased risk of dementia, problems with your heart, problems with your lungs. Uh, we already know just getting COVID alone increase in the month after you get a, your increased uh, risk for getting depressed, your increased risk of getting diabetes, uh, and you're also increased risk for heart disease. So um, it's not something, you know, to fool around with and think, well, it's just going to be mild and it doesn't really matter. And, and again, this VA study now pointing to multiple times, which we're seeing more and more, you know, as we see the new subvariants, there's a risk associated with that, which is why, uh, again, if it's, you know, not big of an inconvenience just to protect yourself and protect others in those higher risk indoor spaces by playing placing a, a you know, face covering, a mask uh, that's high quality in N95 or KN95 uh, to help prevent that transmission. Because even if the case ends up being just mild, you could have risk factors down the line that you normally wouldn't have for something like the cold or flu. And just as kind of the final reminder, if you do end up getting it, um, what are the latest recommendations as far as isolating before you can go back to work and if you don't qualify for Paxlovid or you're having your, a hard time getting your hands on it, as a lot of people, at least in our area, are, uh, what can you do while you're at home? You know, monitoring your symptoms is critical, um, you know, and if you are a higher risk because of your age or a chronic condition, getting a pulse oximeter where you can actually see the oxygen level in your lungs if you're having lung symptoms. In terms of how infectious you are, as long as you're testing positive, even on a rapid test, even if it's like a little faint positive, you are infectious technically. And I know the CDC has, you know, talked about like the five day go back to work kind of situation. And people have to look at that and kind of do the pros and cons and things like that. But in general, you know, again, as far as what we know with the science, you are infectious as long as you test positive. Because one thing we certainly know is the variants do continue to mm -hmm. evolve right along with this pandemic. Uh, so all sound advice and, and stuff that we need to continue to practice. Dr. Shab, thanks so much for the guidance again this morning. My pleasure. Thank you, Noah.